shreds, locks, twists, no matter what you've heard them called, chances are you probably recognize the style when you see it. Whether splashed across Bob Marley album covers or seen in everyday life, Locks, also known as dreadlocks, are one style that has a knack for capturing attention. And while most of us have encountered locks on other people, there's still a lot of folks who don't know about the actual style or the people who choose to wear it. One factor is that for some, education about locks begins and ends with how we see it portrayed in pop culture. While it's true that groups like Rastafarians may opt for locks, they are only part of a much larger community. One person who is currently raising her voice when it comes to locks is Ashley Acuna. She is the creator and host of The Grapevine, a web show that is geared towards creating meaningful discussions between cultures. And today, she is gonna share with me what she wants the world to know about how she chooses to wear her hair. It's one of the world's most highly recognizable and often misunderstood hairstyles. Now it's time to dive beyond the surface of dreadlocks, minus the dread. This is Maine, and today we are diving into the real stories behind locks. How did this happen? Like, what was your hair journey like, starting from a child? Yes. How did you wear your hair, and then how did you get here? So when I was a child, I had a perm like most black girls that my mom put a relaxer in my hair every like two months. Mm -hmm. I would go through like the pain and of the heat when you put the relaxer and like the new growth. And I found a hairstylist, this Jamaican lady, and she was like, you need to put a perm in your hair like once a month. <laughs> and like, I was like, okay. It didn't sound right to me, but I was like, okay. And then like, my hair started to thin. And I went from like long hair, like up to here, thick hair to like, I had to cut it like up to here and I was like, F this, I don't want this anymore. So I put like micro braids in my hair and I started the process of going natural. And then I kind of got tired of like the afros. Mm -hmm. And then I went to a festival in Philly called the Dune Day Festival. And I saw all these women with like beautiful locks and I was just like, wow, like I want this for myself. I was just in awe of like all the different colors. Like I remember this woman, she had like really long locks that were burgundy. Mm -hmm. And I just remember feeling like I thought locks were limit limiting. Mm -hmm. And they really are like limitless. Like and that's what I realized when I went to the festival. I think I was just able to view myself as a woman mm. and coming into my own and you know having gone through having a mother who wanted me to have certain type of hair and always kind of dictating where I went to do my hair and then finding my own hairstylist and totally f***ing that up, f***ing my hair <laughs> up completely right. and then kind of realizing like okay let me go back to who I am, shave it all off, look at myself in the mirror and say okay this is me, I accept it. Faux locks. Yes. Faux locks, see, I have a love-hate relationship with faux locks mm -hmm. because they look beautiful. I just kind of feel like it's the look without the struggle, mm -hmm. the struggle. Because mm -hmm. I really do feel like when you lock your hair, it's a process on like self-love because right. you have to learn how to accept yourself the way that you look in its like raw form, mm -hmm. in, your, in your raw form. And I feel that, you know, when you kind of skip that, you get the all the perfect? glory. Yeah, you get all the glory, but that you don't you don't get the internal glory. Mm. You know, which I think is worth it for especially black women. Mm. But I don't judge anybody who gets full locks. You know, a lot of like Jamaicans, Jamaican aunties mm -hmm. and uncles who are like more conservative look at locks as a form of, I don't know, negativity. The whole like they call them dreadlocks, mm -hmm. dreadful. Right. Um that's why I don't use that term, I just use locks. How has your hair care regime changed now since having long? So I get my hair done once every two months. I grease it, I oil it. That's about it. I went to my hairstylist. She's been doing my hair since I was a child. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Um, and she was proud of me, and she has seen so much, so much of my hair journey, so she was happy. So yeah, she started, and then when I was done, I didn't like it. When you lock your hair, it kind of shrinks. Right. So it just, like, was here, mm -hmm. and it was just very awkward, but right. I stuck with it. Stuck Why? With it. I stuck with it because, first of all, I wanted to prove everybody wrong, and I knew what the end result would be if I continued to lock my hair and keep my hair healthy. But she definitely like washes it, thorough wash, that takes some time because I have a lot of hair, 
and then she starts the retwisting. And the retwisting is just kind of like a circular motion to retwist the new growth so that it looks like smooth and like forms with the rest of the hair. And that hurts a bit because you know you gotta get in there and get everything so it's a bit painful. And then I style it. So all in all it takes like about three and a half hours. Wow. And that's it every two every, months. Every two months. What's the difference between you maintaining your locks versus someone who may freeform their locks? Um, so freeform tends to be, it's more so you like you let your hair grow in whatever state it is. So like you just let your hair have a life of its own. Um, and someone like me, I keep my locks maintained. I get them retwisted like once every two months. Okay. Um, so they're more neat. Mm -hmm. So freeform, you know, they're totally different. We see Asian people with locks, white people with locks, mm -hmm. and their journeys and their experiences tend to differ. Do you personally have an opinion on people outside of the black community? We can't police how people do their hair. Right. I understand the frustration, but for me, again, like we have certain universities where, like black universities where you can't wear locks and go to their business school. Absolutely. You can't be on their cheerleading team. That would be Hampton. So like stuff like that, that's very hurtful because mm -hmm. you come to like where you, you're supposed to be home with your people right. and they're telling you like, no, like these African-centered hairstyles are not welcome. So that for me is more painful and more important. You know, going natural is saying like, I don't want to look like a white woman. Like mm -hmm. I'm perfectly fine with the way I look. and. There's a power and a confidence in that that I, I want black people to reclaim. And I think we are. I definitely was fearful, but I don't regret it. And I'm very happy. It's been a great journey. Thank you so much, Ashley. No I really problem. appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Give yourselves a round of applause. Please. And one thing we seem to understand, locks make an impression on the world. And that's a testament to just how powerful a voice this style has the ability to command. And while locks will continue to evolve, the legacy of love and acceptance will continue to endure.